I'm British. And it's really hot. British people don't do well in heat. I can't even go outside with a backpack without getting a ridiculous sunburn. It's about 30 degrees here, Celsius, at the moment, which is unheard of in the UK. So no, I'm not going to be doing any blacksmithing. It's too bleeding hot. However, let's make an electrochemical etching machine. Warning, electrochemical etching machines are dangerous and you should not attempt this at home. I take no responsibility for if you kill yourself. With that said, you should definitely try this at home. They're freaking awesome. But don't do it. Thing is, right, electrochemical etching machines are really expensive. Like, just looking on eBay, you're looking a couple hundred quid for a relatively okay one. And I don't really understand why, because they're really cheap to make. Now don't get me wrong. I am by no means an electrician. I don't claim to know what I'm doing. I don't claim to be any good at this stuff. I am very much rookie level. However, what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow a guide from Blackbeard Projects, where he ended up making a pretty good um, electrochemical etching machine using uh, an AC adapter. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, I'm not quite sure how this is going to go, but uh, we can only give it a try. Let's see. All right, then. So if you want to give this project a try, these are the tools I used. A soldering gun or soldering iron, either's fine. Uh, a metal cutting hacksaw. A simple file a scalpel or exacto knife, an electric multimeter, your normal pen knife, a marker pen, and a drill. Or in my case, I use my drill press, but either would be fine. And that's about it. Now, obviously, the first thing we need in order to get this project started is an adapter. Um, what you want is one of these old-school adapters um, that are very heavy, normally quite large. The new rectangular ones you see, they're no good. So I picked myself up this uh, DV1280UP adapter, which is exactly the same one as uh, Blackbeard uses in his projects. Um, I use this just because I'm out of my comfort zone with this, so I thought I'd stick exactly to his plans. As you can see here, um, I'm just cutting out and around the, uh, the box so that I can actually get to the inside. Um, this is obviously not uh, a UK uh, plug, so what I'm going to be doing is adapting it for a three-pin socket as well. Um, if you're not sure how to do this, uh, it's relatively simple, but I'll explain in more detail when we get there. So, uh, as you can see, we've uh, opened it up. Um, what I'm doing initially is just cutting the cable to the power, just so it's uh, easier to work with, I can, so I can get rid of that back plate. Um, those two cables there will be the power outlet. The next thing we're going to want to do is uh, solder two wires onto the transformer. Um, that's done relatively easily. Uh, there's just two obvious wires which connect from the circuit board to the transformer and that's where we're just going to be soldering two additional wires uh, like how you can see here. So having connected the two new wires the next step will be to uh, extend the old. So you can see here I've chopped off the um, the excess and I'm now just going to be uh, extending it out with two fresh wires. Um, the two sets of wires we're going to be left with that will be uh, the DC and the AC outlets. Um, one of which will be used for the etching, one will be used for the marking. Uh, a useful tip if you're not particularly good at soldering is to put a little bit of solder onto the wire first on either end and then it makes it much easier to melt them together. Uh, all I'm doing now is I'm just securing the bare wire in place with some electrical tape just to uh, obviously prevent it from shorting out and just make it a little bit safer. So I'll do that for each of the sections where um, I'm obviously soldering just to hopefully prevent it from shorting out. With that done we can move on to the power input. Uh, I'm obviously UK based so I'm going to be using a 3-pin of which we'll only need the blue and brown live and neutral wires. The green and yellow earth wire, uh, that can just be tucked out of the way. As you can see here I'm just securing it again with a little bit of electrical tape and I just fold it back on itself so that it's out of the way. Uh, it's not harmful to keep it in place but yeah just make it safe so obviously it's not going to cause any issues further on down the line. Uh, now that this is done, I'm going to solder it to the back of the transformer, like so, and that is as simple as that. That's our power input. Um, next job will be to use this multimeter to establish both the AC and the DC and the positive and negative wires. If you're not sure how to use a multimeter, I'll include a link in the description below for a pretty good YouTube guide. Um, it's the one I used and it made it pretty obvious. The, um, the two wires that we soldered earlier to the transformer, they deliver AC and the two that are already leaving the transformer, they deliver the DC. The little plugs you can see on screen now, um, they're just banana sockets, and they connect to banana plugs, which is what I've got in my hand at the moment. 
Um, I'm just doing this to simply test it to see if this works. So I'm connecting up the um, banana plugs to some crocodile clips, like so. Uh, and then I'm just testing the positive and negative to make sure I've definitely got them the right way round. Uh, here you can see I'm doing a test etch. Um, so I'm connecting the positive sides to the piece of steel I wish to etch. And then just using a bolt, um, a bit of J-cloth and some electrical tape to secure it, I'm going to see if I can etch it. Uh, the electrolyte I'm using is literally just salty water. It's as simple as that. So I dip it in, make sure uh, it obviously powers on, and pushing it to the piece of steel for just a few seconds, you can see that I actually come out with quite a successful etch from this. Um, I'm actually surprised at just how quickly this works. I used to use a little 9 volt battery, and you'd be there for about half an hour and a hell of a lot of cotton buds. But uh, yeah, this was literally within sort of 20 seconds, get a nice little etch like so. With the etch tested, it's now time to do the same thing with the mark. So as you can see, I've marked my um, my etch cables and I've identified positive and negative. Uh, I'm literally just doing the same thing here, but with the uh, the marking cable. So again, positive connected, using the negative to uh, mark onto the steel. And as you can see, that came out pretty well. The excess initially rubs off, but uh, you are left with a good mark. So there you go, both now uh, wired up, both now identified as what they're doing. And I'm going to connect them to this little uh, three-way switch. Um, it's important when you're doing this to keep all of the positive wires uh, down one side. So that's both the positive for the etching and the positive for the marking. They'll go on one side but at either end. Uh, and then the outlet wire goes into the centre and that's what then chooses between which circuit you're closing and whether you'll be delivering DC or AC. This part can be a little fiddly, but um, just take your time and make sure you're uh, you're getting it right and that none of the uh, the wires are touching each other. So here we go, you can see this little spider of wires. You can see how I've marked with red tape each of the positives and they all run down the same side and you just come away with this nice little positive negative outlet. Uh, now that we've uh, established what's what, um, I'm just going to wire up another banana socket to the negative and to the positive. Uh, we only need two of these now as the other wires obviously go through the switch. Um, with that done, you can flick nice and quickly between your AC and your DC. So we're going to give that another quick test on this uh, this um, very mature little sample. So again, uh, we just go over it with the etching electrodes first, um, and then we can just flick the switch, and straight away we're able to mark it, as you can see here. Um, the result comes out pretty well, um, so we'll remove all of the tape and we'll have a little look at that in a, in a bit more detail. But um, yeah, it comes out pretty good. So here are the results of the um, the tests. So obviously this is it with the just the etch, um, which creates a little sort of lip, as you can see. This is the marking, but there's no lip on this. It's just um, surface deep, so that could very easily sort of scratch off. And then here is the result of the two. So you've got the depth of the um, the etch, and if I hold the scalpel right, you can see that there is a little little lip for it to go over just there um, and obviously it's then marked as well and that is um, you know that's not that doesn't rub off that stays put so yeah I'm pretty happy with that um, so the next thing to do will be to put it all in the casing and it'll be done I'm happy now I also decided to um, make a little applier so I just cut out a little square of uh, oak, English oak um, small piece of brass and uh, a stainless steel bolt um, and all I did was uh, I obviously screwed the piece of brass um, and I countersank both so that it goes nice and flush with the, um, the surface. Uh, this did cause the brass to bow slightly but that was kind of expected so um, all I did then was I just went around it with a little little sort of um, pin hammer and just hammered it flat again uh, and then finally having charred the piece of oak um, I just oiled it to uh, help preserve it. So once the uh, oil had finished drying, um, all I did was I took a couple of little washers um, and then I took the original wire uh, with the crocodile clip on the end, which I then removed just using my little pen knife there. Um, and all I did was I wrapped the wire around the bolt uh, sandwiched in between the two washers uh, and then held it in place using a simple winged nut. Uh, this actually worked pretty well. It provided a pretty strong grip. Um, it certainly doesn't seem like it's going to go anywhere. Obviously the bolt is a little bit long, quite a lot of that sticking out, so uh, I just marked off where I needed to cut it off. Uh, took it outside, popped it in the leg vise, um, and just cut off the excess uh, using my little hacksaw. Uh, once that was done, all I did was tidy it up a little bit, just using a simple file. 
just to make sure that obviously you know there weren't any sharp or jagged edges and nothing that the wing nut was going to get caught on. Uh, and then once that was trimmed back to where it should be, uh, the wing nut went straight back on, an absolute treat, and there it is. There's your uh, applicator. Now that we've got it made, uh, all we've got to do is pop uh, a little bit of felt around the uh, brass head end and uh, just secure that in place with some uh, electrical tape once again, as you can see me doing here. Uh, and that is literally the very last step. That is now a completed applicator ready to use. So, um, happy days. Now, if you've watched Blackbeard Project's video on this, you'll know that he adds in a few additional things. For example, he's got a little uh, cooling fan to um, obviously keep the adapter cool. He's also got a little LED which he uses as a power indicator. Um, and he 3D prints his own case. Now, in terms of the fan and the power indicator, I'm not that bothered about that. My power is literally just going to be the on-off switch at the mains. That's it. It works fine. In terms of the cooling system, as of yet, I've not felt it go that hot that I feel it's going to be an issue. But I guess I can only wait and see, give it time. Maybe it is advisable to add one of those in. I'm actually going to interrupt myself quickly here. Um, there's another reason I'm not particularly worried about the, um, the adapter overheating, and that's mainly because I'm only going to be using this thing outdoors. And there's a good reason for that, I think. I'm pretty sure, in fact I'm nearly adamant, I remember hearing somewhere that either through the process of sending an electrical current through salt water or just as a byproduct of um, the, you know, the metal etching, one of the, um, the substances that is, that is released is chlorine gas. Uh, and I don't know if you know much about chlorine gas, but the long and short of it is it will kill you happily. So you may need to make sure that you're using it in a well-ventilated area. Like I say, I'm not 100% sure this is right, but I'm not willing to test the theory, so outdoors it is. Anyway, back to me. Um, and regarding the 3D printed case. Obviously Blackbeard has a nice new digital 3D printer. Unfortunately, I cannot afford a nice new digital 3D printer. Luckily, however, what I do have is an analog 3D printer. Now you might be wondering, What's an analog 3D printer? Well, I can answer that in four letters. L E G O. Right then, here's where we're at now. So I've obviously got the adapter inside the box. Um, I think I'm going to be mounting the switch somewhere along this side here. It seems to fit quite nicely in between the adapter and the wall. Um, we've then got our outlets, our negative, and just hiding in the corner our positive, which will connect to this plate here. Uh, and then finally, I'm going to have the touch mark put somewhere in the middle up here, around there somewhere.
Time to glue. And there she is, the finished electrochemical etching machine. Nice and simple. Got your two power leads coming down, applicator, alligator clip, power. And that is pretty much it. Now, let's give this a test. So for the finale of this uh, project, uh, I made a little template just using uh, electrical tape and an X-Acto knife. This was not easy, but uh, we got there. So uh, we're going to dampen off our, uh, our applicator and we're going to see if we can give this a good etch and a good mark. Um, I found that uh, using uh, three 10 second bursts uh, with the applicator, that seemed to create a pretty good etch. Um, as you can see here, it seems to be burning in the design pretty nicely. Um, and then, like I say, after I'd done three 10 second bursts, I did exactly the same thing uh, whilst marking it. So we just flick the switch over to mark, and like I say, three more 10 second bursts uh, using exactly the same method. Um, after finishing that, all we do is we uh, give it a good rinse under the tap, um, got rid of all of the excess, uh, well, I don't even know what it is, crud. Um, took off the electrical tape, uh, and we just took a look to see how the design came out. And I'm not going to lie, um, I was quite impressed with this. I think this came out really well, considering it was a bit of a botched job. But um, here we go, we'll get rid of the last bit of the extra tape, give it one last clean, and I just gave it a quick scrub with some um, scotch bright. And there you have it. One pretty much spot-on example of electrochemical etching. Um, I had originally planned for the sort of finale to make the, um, the template using a, a vinyl cutout but uh, I couldn't find anywhere that would do it particularly cheap, and vinyl cutters are really expensive. Maybe one day I'll invest, but um, for now, I'm pretty happy with how this came out. It's not perfect, there's like a little um, lip here where obviously it got in underneath the uh, electrical tape, and the O, uh, the centre of the O is a little bit messy, but I mean, you know, for something which has cost me next to bugger all, you can't really ask for more than that. I think that's come out really cool. So, uh, happy days. So anyway, that's the end of the video. Um, I hope you liked it. If you didn't, you wasted your own life watching it. Um, and if you did, be sure to subscribe and do all that other stuff everybody says at the end of YouTube videos. Thanks a lot and see you around. Bye!